We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. Endowed by their creator. With certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. happiness. Just, you know, weeks prior, we saw the footage of Ahmaud Aubrey's death. And we also saw Sean Reed's Facebook Live. And we heard the account of what happened to Breonna Taylor and Tony McDade, Robert Fuller, and Rayshard Brooks. Last night, we added Toy and Salua to the list. You know, the incidents of Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Flando Castile, Michael Brown, men and women that have been un unarmed and are constantly being murdered by the police. What do you think makes Mr. Floyd's murder, what makes his death different? It, it's a different mindset because the police knew what he was doing. And the police, and, and as the black people, as us, we're tired of seeing that. So it took, so like, that was like the last line, last draw. Like, I, I would have been ready to go all the way to the court with it. Like, it was, a, it was a jaw. Like, we've seen this happen so many times. We see this happen, we see this happen. But yet, we have always get denied and denied and denied. So now, since we started looting and protesting and doing all this, now it's made them want to hear us at least. I'm not saying we get getting stuff done, but we're not getting stuff done. But at least they're trying to hear us. But I, I don't, I, it's different. I'm just saying, like, my main thing to this question is it took nine minutes. It's, it's different. It's a different way from this death. I yeah. I also wanted to add, um, I George's death was captured is very specific. Like um, the young lady's name who, who captured it, but God bless her. Um, but the angle in which she captured it, usually when we see the deaths of our brothers and sisters, it's from a security camera, it's from a body camera, uh, an angle is a little bit disoriented um, or just disheveled. Um, she got an angle that was so close where you couldn't help but to see the hatred in this man's eyes and to see this grown man on the ground with his hands behind his back calling like you said for his mom and calling for the lord like it was so up close you saw the officers who were just standing by his accomplices you saw other footage of them um beating him in the cop car like it was the angle at which she captured it was very was very deliberate and it wasn't from this third person point of view it was right first um it was um up close and personal um at the end when she captured i think that's what makes it different too as an older person what you all what we all witnessed is what people said even older than my generation you just said it that's what it felt like a public lynching and it was rough i would say that um him his death I don't think it was different. I think that the Black community um, has experienced this death over and over and over again. So I wouldn't say that um, George Floyd was, uh, I don't want to make it seem like George Floyd wasn't a special person or wasn't uh, unique, but I think that people think that this is, um, you know, what's so special about George Floyd? Why is all of a sudden? We've been mad for years. We've been keeping this inside and i think especially um uh doctor <laughs> i think it's really important that you're on this call is because um it does do something to us as black people to watch our people die over and over and over again and to see these lynchings because other murders have been caught on camera um but if there's one thing i would like to also agree with ryan is that we are in the midst of a pandemic we're all sitting at home watching you can't ignore this, which was what a lot of people have done in the past. They've had the opportunity and the freedom, the luxury to just ignore what's happening and tune out the world. But in, um, in this situation, I think the one thing we're all sitting home watching Black people be lynched and no one can deny it anymore. And everyone has to acknowledge that trauma that's been building up and this energy also that's been building up from um, quarantine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it seemed like we just couldn't take a break within that short time because we lost Amar Aubrey, then we lost Breonna Taylor, and then George Floyd. It just seemed like it was too much. Yes, we've been fed up, but like she said, um, like all of y'all said, it was frustrating. 
And frustrating is not even the worst frustrating because it le- it legit felt like we could get a break. It was one after the other after the other, and it's still going after the other after the other after the other in the midst of protests happening. And that's that's infuriating because what are we protesting for? Yes, we're protesting for change, but while we're changed, the change that needs to be made is still yeah. occurring. And if not more, it seems like it's happening amazing, and it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. Yeah. Jade and Ava, I would love to hear from you and just what have the conversations been like within your households, within your peer groups? How are you all you know, using your platforms and your voices to be proper allies? The video, um, which I was, you know, kind of debating, do I watch this? Do I not watch this? Because I don't need to see, like, I think what's going on is I don't need to see, like, being violently injured or killed in order to care, you know, and go through that trauma. But, like, as a white person, understanding it from how silent I've been at at the hands of these people, um, at the hands of, you know, people who look like me, killing people who don't look like me. And um, I think in my household, it's been more of a reckoning than anything, just to be aware and to be involved in the listening and the learning process and being supportive of, like, of course I don't condone it, but if I don't say something, I'm condoning it. And if I don't, you know, use my platform to say something, I will forever regret that moment that I didn't take to step up. And I think the first thing I posted, I felt like that sense of, oh my gosh, am I am I doing something like, controversial and then I thought to myself I was like this is this is how I feel though I don't feel like that's okay I don't feel like that's what people deserve I don't feel like anyone deserves that about especially not people who are disproportionately affected and so I felt that moment of like tug at my heartstrings like no that's that's who I am and that's what I believe and I believe in you know xyz and I don't care how many followers I lose but I think for a lot of people it's a hurdle that seems silly and seems, but when it comes down to that moment of like, am I gonna step up and say the hard stuff? And then am I gonna, you know, allow myself to be um, corrected? Yeah. Is in the past. Absolutely. And something that stood out to me was the fact that you actually allowed um, Tandy Way to come on and take over your Instagram for the day. Why did I'm you- so grateful she did yeah. I just, I, it, I... Was, it was so cool to have her. Why did you feel the need to her take over your Instagram? Because this is a, this is as much as it is my fight as a human being. It's not something that I can speak to. It's not an experience that is uniquely mine. Um, and so, you know, having Tim DUA on there was so important to me because I didn't have the right words to say, and nobody really needed to hear it from me. They needed to hear it from some, from somebody who knew what they were talking about, who you know had the passion and the experience behind them and. I'm really like so grateful she did that because I think as much as people can say like the terrible place, I think we've been using it for a lot of amazing things at this moment. There's a lot of power in looking at how we are responsible and examining something as it really is. And that in itself, learning about it and recognizing it is a privilege because it, you're learning about it and not experiencing it and to lean into the education and and responsibility and accountability and then directing all of it towards how we can change it and exercising empathy is um, something that I, I think is really important. And um, yeah, and I, I completely agree. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking and, um, and it's important, I think, as, as a and people with platforms to use it to amplify other voices and to have the responsibility to step up and take action. You know what I mean? Um, to not do that is, is complying and, and it's harmful and detrimental. And um, I've just been really leaning into to learning and exercising empathy and doing all that we can to dismantle. I actually, I was just reading The Miseducation of a Negro by Carter G. Woodson and a quote from the book that says, if you can control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his action. When you determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. Inferior, you don't have to compel him to accept an inferior status for he will seek it himself. Um, And to me, that quote was just so incredibly timely. I mean, it's a true depiction of where we have been as a community, but I I believe that there has been 
an awakening since the civil rights movement that, you know, the collective accepting an inferior status that does not serve us, you know, we're no longer accepting that. And, you know, we're no longer accepting things that does not serve our well-being and not protect us and does not see our humanity. Um, so we've seen that, you know, with these large crowds of protests come out. Why did you feel the need to go out there and protest? For me, the biggest thing was, you know, I don't want to, I, for me, I don't want to sit home in my living room and watch this in history, which is the biggest civil rights movement that the history has ever seen, period. I don't want to do that from my living room. Yeah. Um, however, as is, is, is Dr. Alfie said, it's not for everyone and nobody should feel guilty if they don't feel comfortable, if they don't feel safe and they, um, it's just about what's right for you. For me, I need to, I needed to be out there. I needed to put myself in a situation where I'm experiencing what we're all experiencing because we're all the same. Um, I needed to, you know, when I, when I ended up speaking that day, I was absolutely terrified. I'm not a public speaker. I'm better. If you ask me a question, I can answer it with a really long answer, but like, I'm not like a public speaker, like a speech person. It terrifies me. My heart pounds out of my chest. It's just terrible. But um, I had to say that day because I was like, all right, Lord, like, what is my, my role and what am I supposed to be doing specifically? What are you calling me to? And I just felt in my spirit that I needed to say what a lot of us were already talking about earlier is that with COVID, it's horrible, it's horrible. And we are being affected the most. But in the same breath, I think that there is a blessing in this particular season because we are being forced to pay attention. And those of us who weren't seeing or weren't listening or didn't want to see, whatever it was, the point is, it's right here, it's in your face. You can't ignore it, you cannot escape it. You cannot get away from it. So you're going to do something or you're not. And you get to choose what side of the line that you're on. And there is no other option. It's either this or that at this time. So for me, I just need to be a part in any way that I can and be as active as I can, whatever that looks like. And I'm just like letting God tell me what that looks like and not letting anyone pressure me or make me feel any kind of way and just being spirit led on it. And, um, and yeah, so I think it's, I think it's important to, especially in the industry that we're in, um, you know, like when I first started posting, I was getting some backlash and people were like, you know, are you going to keep posting this stuff? And like, are we going to talk about this all the time? And I'm not following you anymore. And, you know, and then I had someone in the industry say to me when I was like, you know, I'm, I'm learning more about defunding the police. And like, I thought I had one meeting and now I'm understanding it differently. And then as I'm talking to, the, um, to Kendrick and um, Melina and everyone, you know, it's really about determining what you support and how you support it. And so I was like, I just want to be careful that what I say, I'm completely educated and I don't use words that are divisive, but rather for unity. Um, and someone said to me, well, maybe you just shouldn't say anything at all, you know, just go and support and take pictures. And I'm like, I'm not there to take pictures. Yeah. I'm not there to be like, guess what, guys, I was here. I'm here because this is what's in my heart. And if I feel led to say something, I'm going to say something, you know. Um, but it was really interesting because even, you know, as the girls were saying, no matter what, it takes courage to speak up, even within our industry where people might not want to hire you or they think you're too radical are you talking about your blackness too much or like that might be an issue you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day it takes courage period point blank across the board to speak up and to do what you know is right and and obviously it's not even an option for me now but um that was a long-winded answer to yes i went out to protest okay. i'm gonna be quiet no i mean <laughs> i absolutely can relate i was also put on the spot with a speech but just i don't know i found I no, no, you're good, um, but I I don't know. I really I, I feel like I found comfort in protesting, in a way because I feel as though you know there have been just thousands of people that have gone out you know of all different colors, all different backgrounds, all different races, and I'm just I don't know. I really have hope for the future, and it makes me feel as though you know, is this actually a movement and not a moment? Because, you know, these things have happened before. We've protested, we've posted, but nothing has really happened. There hasn't been change made. But I've seen a shift with this movement in itself. And actually, Tandy, I just wanted to throw it to you. What has inspired you? I mean, your mom is absolutely incredible, and you're absolutely incredible, along with your sister. And so what has inspired you to really get out there and lead these protests and use your voice and your youth advocacy to try and create change? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's really weird, I think, for me when people talk about, like, uh, like, I don't know, like, when people make it seem that youth activism is something that's, like, interesting or just different, um, because my siblings and I, like, my mom is, I guess, my biggest inspiration, um, but it was always just very normalized for me and for my community, especially, um, I don't remember when I went to my first protest, but I'm told for the Gina Six. Um, I remember going down to Limerick Park and listening to the Black Panthers, you know, do their thing um, and educate the young African school and, you know, listening to folks who were around during the Black Power Movement. Um, and so, yeah, I just think um, more of like a sense of duty, I guess. Um, my mom likes to say it's everyone's sacred duty to do this work. Uh, no matter, it doesn't have to be protesting, but that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to be doing work. Um, if you are a dancer, okay, dance for the revolution. If you're an artist, um, not everybody has the same talent and that's a beautiful thing. At the end of the day, it's just about putting whatever you have and all of what you have as much as you can um, take to put it in to the movement, do that work. And so, um, I mean, I do art, but I feel better going to protests and uh, bringing my friends and organizing in that capacity. And so, um, I don't know if that was a good response. Oh, no, that absolutely was. You help us, we help them, compassion. It's ingrained in love, that's the answer, but the answer to the opposite direction of the cause. Black bodies, they don't care. You see me unaware of what's on my mind. Black bodies, oh, I need you to see. Got some good change in my heart. That's where change gotta start. That's where change gotta start.